Watch Dogs Legion is the latest installment in the Watch Dogs franchise and is going in a pretty interesting direction in terms of some of its major mechanics and possibly even in terms of its story. The main thing we know, obviously, is that um, you're able to control anybody um, with their own little recruitment mission. Um, you can induct them into DedSec and get to play as them in future missions. Um, so I guess we'll start with that main mechanic that they're obviously uh, advertising. Um, and I guess we'll start by talking about what we think about it. Um, do you think it'll work? Um, do you think it's going to be sort of groundbreaking? Or do you think it might come a little bit short? Um, I think it's imperative that they get a good um, a good main character. Um, one that you can relate to. One that has a good storyline. One that has good you know, justification and all the rest of it. Before going into being able to sort of control anyone and, and everyone. Because um, I think that... Ubisoft have been really hit and miss with doing that over the years. Um, they've created some really great characters, you know, like Ezio um, from Assassin's Creed or even Altair before that. Um, and Desmond actually was a really good character. And then subsequently, um, almost every single one of the, say, the Assassin's Creed characters have been pretty boring. Um, and two of the biggest criticisms that we've had so far for both um, Watch Dogs games is that maybe Aiden wasn't very well received very well liked and you know also i think from a lot of people's perspective in watch dogs 2 both marcus and that dead set crew were a little bit i don't know not 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 the best not not bad but not the best um and so i think that this is really imperative for them is to actually have a really good main character because that really shapes a game um where, where would the grand theft auto games be without their main characters in each you know installation um you know the last one that didn't have a named main character was gta 3 and that's sort of been a forgotten about GTA since, to be honest. Um, so that's where I'm at, I think, is is they need to have a good main character first, and then the idea of being able to control anyone and everyone will f flow from that. What, what do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. I think to, to sort of develop a, a complex narrative that's, like, interesting um, and sort of hooks you, you have to have, like, a main character who's sort of pulling the strings, like um, somebody who is always there so that no matter what, no matter who you recruit off the streets into DedSec, you always have that main character sort of uh, as your as your uh, anchor to the story. Because otherwise, um, from what I'm seeing anyway, it's definitely something that's a bit of a concern for me, is that um, you could play the game and only recruit um, like normal civilians. Um, so like obviously they, they did that little trailer, which was um, pretty comedic and definitely like looks fun um, in terms of gameplay. Um, but definitely not in terms of story is you can recruit like a grandma off the street and her um, Her move set is gonna be a lot weaker than that of like if you recruit a actual like military person or something like that um, And that does look like fun in terms of a gameplay, you know, like doing uh, Doing a mission entirely stealth with like a grandma is pretty funny But in terms of story, what's the grandma's reason to be trying to go up against this? Um, I think it's called Albion uh, the like organization that they're fighting that's kind of like um sort of forming like a big brother sort of control over um london um with you know like the ctos as their like technology backup um i don't know i just don't know how people are going to be able to invest in a story when there's sort of interchangeable characters um such as like a, an actual grandma who will have no reason to be like in a uh, high-tech facility um taking out drones and whatnot like it just doesn't make too much sense to me but in terms of gameplay i think it could be really really interesting and a lot of fun um i guess my other major concern besides the sort of story side of things is the um the um, entire recruitment mission process um might get really really stale um and the reason I say this is because I think already some people who have played some of the demos have stated that they've done some duplicate missions. Um, and obviously the game isn't even out yet um, as of the time of this recording. Um, so if people are finding duplicates there, I feel like me as somebody who might try to get like one of every class or something just for, for general like free roam, just for the fun of it. Um, you know, I might end up doing the same recruitment mission multiple times um, with the only difference being like the skin of the character rather than um, like the actual content of the missions. Like I don't really want to recruit the same character over and over with just a different actual like visual um, as the character that I'm getting. Yeah, and I mean, so far the list of um, 
characters that you can actually or, or you know npcs that you can take over not take over whatever you recruit um has been a little bit stereotypical is what often happens when you have north american you know not knocking north american but a lot of people from north america what do they think of when they think of london and england they think of football hooligans okay well that's in there i mean i grew up, grew up in london um during the 90s and the 2000s and um I used to go to a lot of football matches and I can say I've, I can count on one hand the amount of actual football hooligans that I've come across. Um, they really don't exist anymore. Um, and then you've got the spy coming with a nice car and yeah. the silencer, you know. Um, then there's the um, street artist, they call it, but actually that's a graffiti artist. Um, so that yeah. comes with, equipped with a paintball gun and a paint bomb, right? Okay. So it's all, it's kind of, a, there's a lot, and there's the construction worker, which I know you have construction workers everywhere, but you know, there's, I'm sure they'll have some of those, like, you know, built in NPC one liners that, that are very London. Um, I'm always drawn, like, I've, I've, I've enjoyed the Watchdog series despite some of its flaws. Um, I've enjoyed some of the things that you can do with it. And I'm looking forward to this game at some point. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get it on launch, which is in four days as of time of recording. So on, on October 29th. Um, the graphics look, look like a step up, um, that's for sure, since um, since before, but not significantly um, anyway, in any case. Um, I'm not sure if the story does a huge amount. And, I mean, they've talked about the fact that they started working on this before the Brexit vote happened, but that would have been four years ago before the first one came out. So um, I don't think that quite rings true. Um, so I, I am worried about whether they've, you know, what they, what kind of politics they try and put into it. Um, I thought they did a fairly good job in the second one in particular. Well, the first one was pretty much politics free, which I thought was good. It was just about, you know, a controlling state, you know, which I thought was really good. Um, the second one, had you know because it was in san francisco so it had a bit of that liberal leaning stuff here and there but they didn't they sort of went one way and then they went back the other way with it which i thought was quite good but it does make me wonder i mean it does seem to be that you're fighting against the people that voted for brexit almost um which i think is a really dangerous place to be um so it'll be really interesting to see what kind of message they try and put across there if one at all hopefully nothing and they just make a good game which will be great um and the map is massive by the way um from what i can see it goes from essentially camden in the north down to brixton in the south i don't know about the east and west element to it but if it's as big as that then we're going to have a pretty big map of london like one of the biggest ever in a game if not the biggest um so that would be pretty good um so I think there's a lot of um, things to look, look out for, um, and you know, as with say Assassin's Creed Syndicate, whilst it wasn't the best Assassin's Creed game, I still got quite a good bit of player value from it just for simply being in an amazing setting, which was a Victorian era London. Yeah, I think the map definitely might be one of its strong points, um, and I think hopefully, um, if the story doesn't completely sort of like bomb out, I think maybe the the mechanic of um, recruiting anybody um, just during free roam and, and just messing around kind of like what a lot of people end up doing in gta um i think this might be a really good game for that um from what i've seen of the map there's a lot of sort of side activities and things you can do um that don't involve the story um and i think that might be really really fun to sort of just like free roam and do a bunch of those side activities with different uh, recruited characters um you know like something that could be quite comedic is like taking a spy to some completely like trivial uh, side encounter so obviously they're completely overqualified for it it could be pretty fun um, I, I just don't know yet um, what sort of content the story is going to hold to uh, keep us invested but I do I'm pretty confident that the general free roam will be good at least yeah I'm definitely I'm, I'm definitely going to get it I'm probably not going to rush out to get it as mentioned on, on release day um, this time but I'm definitely going to get it at some point um, one of the things that we've talked about in previous videos which I quite like um, hearing is the fact that they've pretty much alluded to the fact um, sometimes quite openly and but most of the time less so that this is in the same universe um, as and within the same law as Assassin's Creed and we've talked about in previous videos that they need to go a bit more full-on with that and actually get into the the fact that it is the same and it's actually telling the same story but at different times and it seems like they might be starting to do that a bit more where 
one of the DedSec members, I believe, is actually an actual assassin. And that's been like acknowledged. Um, I think that's a good thing. What do you think? Yeah, I think um, it's sort of been a long time coming. I think referencing it a little bit in Watch Dogs 1 as one of those side missions um, where Aiden kills a character who then doesn't return in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, um, I think is pretty cool. But I feel like with that, they were sort of testing the waters to see how people would like it. And I think it was very, very well received. Um, so I think they're hopefully going to start um, really starting to bridge the gap between the two franchises and maybe even... Um, you know, have the, the modern day of Assassin's Creed just become Watch Dogs um, and obviously have the, the historical aspect be back to Assassin's Creed. I think that would be really, really cool. Um, and obviously, we've talked about this before in a previous video. Um, we really want to see this happen. I think the two franchises definitely um, have a link there and should be explored pretty much to its logical conclusion, which is that, yeah, the, the Watch Dogs universe is the modern day of the Assassin's Creed universe. There's a, a lot of rumours going around because it looks like it's also been um, leaked a little bit that um, Aiden Pierce might actually appear. He will, game. yeah, he is. He is. Um, so there's talks about whether he might actually be the main character. Um, and I think that a lot of the criticism of him was on my playthrough. Well, my first playthrough, I thought, yeah, he's also a little bit bland, a little bit boring. But I've now played through the game like two or three times. Um, and I actually think that he's a much better character than I gave him credit for the first time around. Um, uh, there's an article here as well saying it's no secret that a majority of fans don't like Aiden Pierce. Um, but even as someone who did like the first Watch Dogs as well as Aiden Pierce's character, his inclusion into this game was considered to be a little bit weird. Well, I don't think so. Um, I actually think that there's a lot more people that did like him and that there is some kind of even though it's only six years ago, there's some nostalgia over his, his actual appearance because I thought that the dead set characters and Marcus in Watch Dogs 2 were actually really not that good, to be honest. Um, I found them all very annoying, not very compelling, none of them. In fact, the best character in Watch Dogs 2, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a scene where Wrench, the guy that always wore that mask, yeah, basically got beaten up and had his mask taken off on camera, you know, and kind of, I guess, emasculated that way um or whatever it was and that was actually for the first time and there was obviously another character that died but those were the only two real events that happened whereas there was no other like marcus just starts the game and he's already a hacker you know it's like okay great whereas aiden you realize that he was essentially a hacker that worked with a partner and as a result of a job that he did that went wrong where somebody else found out who he was his niece that like got killed you know what I mean? Like, and then now he's become the vigilante. Like, that's actually a backstory. That's a backstory. Marcus didn't have a backstory, so I'm actually looking forward to Aiden being in the game. And if he is the main character, that actually does compel me to buy it maybe a bit sooner than I thought, if they do it well. Yeah. So from what I'm seeing, um, it seems like there's actually a few return characters. So um, I think Wrench, um, who you were just talking about, is actually also a character in the game, and I think they are recruitable and have their own unique mission lines or storylines but it's not like the main story so i'm not 100 percent sure um how in depth it's going to be um you know i'm not sure whether you can just play as aiden for the main story and just do all of that and kind of ignore the recruiting aspect and just be aiden um, it maybe seems it... to suggest from the devs that it would be a case of you couldn't do it first round first time round he'd be one of the team but then you could replay it with him potentially interesting and maybe there'll be some different changes based on whether you play with him or not i'm not sure um Obviously, as I said, there's Wrench as well, um, and then also there is this assassin character that is um, sort of uh, probably going to have the same sort of situation where they have their own sort of um, side story mission um, that will hopefully sort of shed some more light onto the, the backstory of that character as well. Um, but as you say, I think uh, with Aiden, I think actually I haven't seen anybody um, too disappointed about it. I think everybody I've seen has been pretty excited that Aiden and Wrench is coming back. I think um, I think Aiden is actually kind of a, a secret fan favorite. I don't um, I don't remember seeing anybody in the comments being like, "Oh, why Aiden?" Um, everyone seems pretty pretty okay with that as a choice. Um, so uh, I agree as well. I think it's pretty cool that they're bringing Aiden back, and I'd really like to see where they go with it. Um, definitely one of the more interesting aspects of the game coming out soon. Well, it would be also nice to know if he was the one that was supposedly the assassin because we actually spoke about this from the very start of our videos on, on these games that 
um, and we and from before we were making videos that he sort of had seems to have training as an assassin because he was pretty great with that stick and with a gun and all the rest of it so it'd be interesting if he's the assassin and he's maybe low-key the kind of the, the de facto leader of the remaining assassins left that would be quite interesting um, whether or not that will actually happen I don't know whether we'll see any reference to um, was it um, is it Jacob and Evie Fry, the um, the characters, the twins that you yeah. play as in Syn Assassin's Creed Syndicate? Whether we see any references to that, because it's obviously in the same city, would be kind of cool. Um, I think should what should we expect from this game? Um, maybe a seven and a half out of ten, if we're being fair. Yeah, I I can agree with that. I think um, the main thing is obviously. Um the biggest concern is the main system that they're pushing. Um, I think we've got to sort of temper our expectations because um, obviously we're already seeing that that system does have limits already. Um, you know, it's not going to be exactly what they're advertising it as. You can't, obviously you can recruit any sort of NPC off the streets, but it doesn't mean that every NPC is going to have um, like A, a unique voice actor um, or B, um, like a, a unique recruitment mission. Um, so it's, you know, I'm not sure how far you're going to be able to push the parcel on that one and have that mechanic carry the game. Um, so honestly, I think we're just going to have to see for ourselves um, once the game comes out how that mechanic is going to work and how well it's going to um, sort of keep the game alive. Um, but aside from that, I think the, the main concern as well is obviously the story and hopefully, um, hopefully adding some characters in, like obviously, as we said, Aiden. Um, the assassin character and also uh, Wrench hopefully um, sort of keeps us invested in the story a little more than if uh, they weren't added and it was just random random people off the street and this also may need to be a slow burner given the fact that um, it's going to be um, released you know about two weeks before three weeks before Cyberpunk 2077 um, I think for example the Assassin's Creed game that comes out a week before that might be a bit different because it's not set in sort of like a you know and as an open world modern day if you like or or near future style setting whereas obviously cyberpunk 2077 is that and probably going to be um you know one of the best games possibly ever made <clears throat> so i think that with legion it might be one of those slow burners that when the first one came out it was within a year of gta 5 and so it went under the radar quite a lot but when the second one came out there was no you know next gta yet there was no other you know game eff effectively in that genre so it probably did a bit better and the setting was pretty awesome pretty vibrant whereas this time it's coming out when there's potentially a better game in a very similar setting slash genre if you like um which is going to harm it i think yeah and i also think it's really really strange uh, what ubisoft is doing um with all of their big releases uh, coming out pretty much stacked at the end of this year. Um, we have obviously Watch Dogs Legion coming out in um, four days as of recording. Um, and then about two weeks after that, we have uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which obviously um, people who like Watch Dogs often like Assassin's Creed. So you've kind of got uh, two overlapping markets there um, competing directly with each other, despite the fact that they're from the same uh, publisher, which I think is a bit silly. And then a month after that, you actually have uh, Gods and Monsters, or whatever they're calling it now. I think it's Immortals, Phoenix Rising, or something like that, which is like made by the uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey team. Um, which, well, there's also there's also the next Far Cry coming out. Yeah, which uh, I think is I think it's February. might be Feb. Yeah, <laughs> so really they're just they're really stacking uh, the next few months with games. Which there again, is there is there is a couple of reasons for that is that some of these have been delayed. Um, for they have. Reasons. Yeah. And there's also, you know, two new consoles launching. It's funny how they always seem to launch within a month of each other, these two now. Um, it's almost like they know and they deliberately do it. And you'd think that you would just stagger it a couple of extra months, but it's always Christmas, isn't it, as well? Um, I think I think that this one is one that's probably... I mean, as I said, I will most likely get it. I, I don't have any doubts about that. It's just about when. Um, I'm not going to be getting it straight away because budgets are, you know, are a real thing and Cyberpunk's coming out, you know, but that's, that's just going to, that's, I think this, I think this game is going to live in the shadow of Cyberpunk, um, for quite some time. And I think you'll probably see a lot of people will mention them in the same breath, much that I did with the original Watch Dogs and GTA 5. So I think that it's one of those ones that 
it will just go on. I think it was going to go a bit more under the radar. I don't think it already has, to be honest. Like, I haven't seen as much, um, you know, releases and trailers as Cyberpunk already. Yeah, and I think even Assassin's Creed Valhalla is getting a little bit more attention from Ubisoft itself. Um, despite the fact that, again, that one's actually releasing like almost a week sooner than Cyberpunk. So again, it's even closer to that sort of release window. Um, they're definitely shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. And I, I, again, as you said, I understand why they're releasing them um, sort of at this time, obviously with the delays and whatnot. But I definitely think it's a bit of a... Um, bit of a bad decision from Ubisoft there to stack them so heavily um, in the same few months as Cyberpunk and their other own releases. Well, I think Assassin's Creed was always going to come out on the 10th yeah. of November, um, yeah. whereas I know the Watch Dogs was originally scheduled for March. Yeah, so early this year. The, the other thing is that, that Assassin's Creed Valhalla is Ubisoft Montreal, whereas uh, Watch Dogs Legion is Ubisoft Toronto, so it's a different team it's a different studio if you like yeah but their their market is still like the the, the, the player base is still going to be a lot of the same people um who just buy a lot of ubisoft games um or who like ubisoft's titles like i know that i play both watchdogs and assassin's creed so you know um it makes it a bit more difficult because some people might have to choose between one or the other based on which one they want more so it sort of does um it definitely harms ubisoft i think on, 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 on one thing on its favor is that coming out now and coming out you know, in two weeks, um, it's still, you know, two months and six weeks or whatever ahead of Christmas. So there's still time for some people yeah. to still get in Christmas um, for one of them and then get the other one for themselves or something. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, I actually find it quite interesting that we have, we were talking about the game. Obviously, we don't know everything about the game yet, but we, you know, we've very quickly been talking about things like the release date and all the rest of it. And, um, I definitely have enjoyed, as I said, the Watch Dogs games um, more than what a lot of people have, I guess. Um, but I'm just a little bit sceptical of this one. Um, I will definitely get it, whatever happens, based on the location, because that's already cool. Um, and I just hope that, you know, it doesn't let me down when I do get there. Yep, and I guess we'll find out in four days exactly, um, you know, how well this game is going to hit. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. Um, yeah. So until then, I guess um, this is all we have on Watch Dogs Legion, um, and we hope to see you guys next time for more videos. That's right, and we'll try and do a review as soon as we've both, um, both had it and played it and everything, so um, stay tuned. Yeah, see you next time, guys.